Hi, everybody. It's Friday, and welcome to episode 33 of Run to the Hills. This week, we'll have a catch-up with Hannah Basley, who won our coaching competition as she trains for the Lakeland 50. But first, Eddie and I will have a little catch-up. How's it going, Eddie? Good, thanks. How are you? You made it to London and back. Yeah. Not Australia, is that excellent? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not too sure, you know, if, if I ever go to London, and maybe this is maybe just a northern thing, but I come back shattered. <gasps> it's Absolutely. exhausting, isn't it? It is exhausting. Yeah. All those people. Yeah. Just walking. How was it? I mean, feed me, feed my sadness that I haven't been anywhere for a year. Tell me everything. <laughs> the journey, <laughs> who you saw, what you did. Well, it was, it was super early. You know, I, took, I, I had work to do, so it wasn't all fun. But what the fun part was, I nailed the work in one day um <gasps> my customer it was 10 donation boxes but they could only find seven so my job got cut early <laughs> I, got, I, I got out early so i did it all on the first day but i got to london at like nine o'clock in the morning so it was a six o'clock train from durham oh super early yeah yeah and that did catch up with me but we got the work done and then i had pretty much two days to do as i pleased but although it was quite busy I didn't really see, you know, I was there, so I can't criticize people for being walking around London when I was doing the exact same thing, but people were walking up and down Oxford Street and nothing was open apart from like McDonald's or a coffee shop or something like that. You couldn't purchase anything, maybe click and collect, but I was really puzzled why all of these Yeah, people, what are you doing there? Yeah, why are you there? But I was like running around with my camera filming all these uh, places. I did quite well with that. I did about 10 virtual runs, so... A very productive, a very productive day. Oh, days running around London. But like I said, and how have you run around London before? Did you enjoy it? Oh, I love the. I really do enjoy the capital. I think because um, I used to live down south. That was not London. I said I studied in St Albans and lived in Windsor, so I'm pretty familiar with London. And then moving back up north, I really kind of jump at the chance to go. To mm. London again. I really enjoy mm. it. Um, but yeah, like I said, it my goodness me, it takes its toll, and. Uh, you know. Do you often think, well, I, I lived in London for, in my heady 20s, I lived there from when I was about 24, I think, until yeah. until about 28, you know, prime, yeah. prime time to be in London. And my mum actually said to me, I think because as a country girl, and, and she said, I think it's a really good idea for everybody to live in London a little bit so yeah. that you know it, so that then you realise you never want to... Everyone moves out, don't they? But then if you do go back, you know how it works, you know the underground, yeah, yeah. you know where you are, you know where you're around. But, um, yeah, so I can't believe I lived there like four or five years. And now when I go back um, and I'm there a day, I'm like, oh, my God, get me out. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> it's just so stressful. But um, it's fun running around there. Did you get competitive? Because I get competitive running around London. No, I... You know, with my little GoPro. You, Did you, you look like we, a complete wazzock? Basically, there's, <laughs> there's every other kind of man who's running around with a GoPro or a phone. No, stop but, it. This is a no, thing now. That's an over-exaggeration. But, yeah, it's quite a common sight, seeing middle-aged men running around filming <laughs> things. <laughs> uh but no, I don't get competitive. You know, you never know what run somebody's doing. There's no point in chasing somebody down when they could be like in the middle of a threshold run or something like that. So, well, every time we are lucky that my my uh, my my in laws have a flat near Hyde Park. So if we go back, we're going to stay there, and I run around Hyde Park, and always, always, always guys are racing me or yeah. they're coming up behind me or I'm overtaking them <laughs> and then they come and they're running right behind me and I'm like and of course because it's a novelty to me because normally I don't see anybody for six weeks here yes. I'm like come on then let's do this easy <laughs> run at 5 45 minute mile pace sometimes I do it's really naughty but sometimes I do uh tease people if I'm feeling kind of a bit facetious I'll um just kind of catch somebody up and then then <laughs> Feel them pick the pace up too, and we go. Okay, let's see. Okay, see where we're gonna let's go. see what you do. It's kind of fun, isn't it? It's all good-hearted fun. But I don't know how you can run in Hyde Park and places like that. Literally, the amount of times I nearly got run over or hit by a bike. It was uh, yeah, those bikes, those Boris bikes. Boris well, you see, bikes. they weren't around in my time back in the uh, back in the day. Back in the day. But it's, it is. You've got to be a bit. You've got to be a bit alert, haven't you? It's not trail running, is it? No, no. But I didn't do any sessions. Got, I, I was going to say, did you get any sessions done? No, I, too much. I, I too much to try and do them. Yeah, Tuesday I did my 
threshold run, I think it was. And I had these eyed plans for running in London and that didn't materialize. So I'm running around with my vapor flies on, <laughs> kind of carbon plate shoes. <laughs> but you're probably London. very at home, aren't most middle-aged men? Oh my goodness, with the GoPros mate. and the, the, whatever they're called, Viper carbon. I was looking down at people's footwear and a lot of people in uh, really? Hyde Park had the vapor flies on we're going to have to discuss that in further detail as london marathon approaches because you know i don't have a pair i've got a pair of road trainers that i've stuck together with tape because i only wear them on the treadmill yeah and i'm i'm reticent reticent is that the word to buy to put that much money into a pair of trainers that's going to give me a faster time because i'm like well if i can't get that time myself but then everybody's wearing them so then i'm gonna like yeah. well well i've had mine for 2018 I, I i bought mine so you know we're kind of two and a you've half got, years you've in. got bucks out of them don't Do they think... run out haven't they got like only like 100 miles on them or <laughs> well something? i think they initially said that i think that was the initial kind of intel and it was like oh wow these shoes are going to last for uh, 50 miles or whatever but no i've got quite a bit of wear and tear on the soles but they're okay when You're going to have to it. get a new pair for london once i've really <laughs> talked it up <laughs> i heard which um Forgive me if these are not completely accurate, but the winner of the marathon trials, he is a an on cloud running that brand. Yes, athlete. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but he ran in some Nikes. <gasps> some, yeah, different branded shoe. He had a he had. Um, I thought that was like illegal for athletes once they've signed their shoe contract. I think they they were, they'd endorsed it. They were okay with it. Oh yeah, because I mean, on cloud haven't I? When I signed a shoe contract, it was like you must wear our shoes, but if it's not appropriate for the race, yeah. you can obviously wear a different shoe. So he must. He, they probably had the conversation that they obviously not. They're not a huge brand, are they? They are sponsoring more and more high profile athletes now, yeah. aren't they? But they they haven't got that type of shoe, and yeah. so probably he had in his contract if, contract if you can't. Um, yeah. You can't make that shoe. Well, apologies if I, if I got that wrong. I heard that on another podcast. So if, if, I, if my facts are a bit... Can't regurgitate other material. We got to that stage, <laughs> right, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but London was great. And then what else did we do? I went to the lakes on Sunday. I was supposed to go Saturday, but I was just exhausted. So I didn't. Then I went Sunday and did a leg five. Bob Graham round, recce out and back. And I did leg five because it's very easy nav and it's not the biggest of climbs. I just thought if I'm going on my own, then I don't, I don't want to be kind of in the middle of, say, a leg four. Yes, yeah, big leg four. Yeah, so I don't want to be there. You're feeling a bit tired. You want to be like, on. You don't, you don't, if you're going to make the journey, do what's appropriate to your energy. Well, really, I didn't as want well, to be it? too remote in case I fell over and had to kind of get myself very to, good to very safety. Good. Um, right. But the good thing was, it was I think on our schedule, it's a two hour fifty leg that for us. So we ran from Ke I ran from Keswick to Honister first so i had some miles in my legs mm. and i turned around and good thing that's a great thing for people to do because they can go to honest and freshen up and use the facilities there maybe get a drink if they need to and then i turned oh, it's a around. coffee shop some yeah. sort of pastry <laughs> then i turned around and come back um to keswick and i did it it was a someone's in a strava segment so it popped up that it was like 218 i think i took so yeah and i was you know I, I wasn't i was on my own so there's no kind of testosterone kind of fueling us to kind of compete with each other it was just me just you and your gopro yeah literally that was it and to do it in 218 so what's that to it it's probably half an hour up on the schedule time so that was quite encouraging for, for that and that's oh and no doms which was good <gasps> no doms you know you're not alone because loads of my clients that went out for their first freedom run then then the doms was a real deal <laughs> for good couple of even like just just um just going out on just like really a non-gnarly trail but especially london-based ones they just haven't been able to get out for months yeah. and months and months yeah. <laughs> so a little bit of vert and few of them paid the price yeah. and, and over excitement vert yeah. and over excitement so good yeah all in all very good yourself what have you been up to i'm alive i listened back to our podcast on uh, my long run on sunday and there, there was quite a lot of survival low chat from eddie and i had a few messages from mates back in england going you're gonna be all right eddie it's all right <laughs> don't worry i obviously painted this picture that i was uh i was a bit anxious going into last week and uh our lockdown but actually yeah the homeschooling as we've all learned from if we're homeschoolers is if you set the bar very very low 
And then you expect even lower than that. It's success yeah. for everybody. <laughs> so um, it was a huge, the kids were really, really good. And um, just cracked on because it was only three days because I don't go to school on Wednesday in France. Okay. Um, so it was fine. The teachers had, the, and also I think the teachers knew from last time how to set the work. They were on it. And so we had packs. They just worked through it. I was okay. like, put your earphones on. Mummy's going to sit and work get on with it and they yeah. they were really good also they wanted to have i said if you do it all in the morning we go to skate park in the afternoon so there was primary oh, like, the tricks um so it was fine nice weather and um and now they're on holiday this week so that's just an exhaustion we we all know it the, ex the juggle of everything and i don't help myself but again i listen back and i'm like eddie learn i did a mega session on the treadmill this morning i mean it was a it was like i was so hot and sweaty when i got off it ah. i it was it was so disgusting and my little girl was having a mate around to play and she was like what's wrong with your face eddie <sighs> i was so i took one of those sessions where when you get out the shower you're still sweating oh yes and um you know those ones and then it takes you like an hour to go back for your body to like I'm sure I'm still highly burning calories at the moment because it was uh, it was a really hard session. But it's exciting now. I've stopped skiing, even mm. though we've just had a load more snow. I saw that. But yeah. I, it, yeah, I just decided it was too with the kids and everything. I was like, let's just put those away so they're not talking to me. And then if people ask, I'm not going to try and get up at six o'clock in the morning and get out. Yeah, um, just going to say. No. And nope. so now I'm not. So now I haven't skied for like 10 days. And I did this. I was like, oh, I've got that little bit of extra, little bit of extra. My legs just aren't quite as fatigued. And the running doesn't feel quite so horrendous and bambi like yeah. so uh yeah the session this morning was really good really really hard but um i felt something i've not felt for, i felt strong in the background when i thought if i'd had a massive taper i've got strength and i haven't been able to push myself that hard for a long time yeah i think i've been sitting in a comfortable training zone yeah. and then i push myself a little bit hard but now i think i've got this massive endurance that i've got from this winter and so now i ask myself a bit of a question and i'm like i can go back yeah. to how i used to when i was sort of in my 20s so yeah i did that this morning why when i've got such a busy day and now i'm hugely de can you hear it dehydrated having my lunch and setting myself up for an exhausting <laughs> so if you disappear anyway, your camera you've had a crush if, I'm, or if you from the start hear me start <laughs> eating my cheese baguette but, but could so you say about the taper though like um you know we do this training and stuff we go out for big runs and some days we think oh i'm a bit tired and how am i going to do it on the day but yeah you 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 tr don't train usually you do, do you do have down weeks but usually you're doing your weekly runs and your workouts and you, you're going into them all fatigued anyway. Yeah, yeah. And it's all about trusting the process, isn't it? And often as you start, you're going through these blocks and um, and it's hard at the moment, especially if you're in a country where you are in lockdown like us and there's no races on the horizon. Because mm. it's hard to like be like, that taper, you need that taper to freshen up. Um, yeah. And so I am going to set myself a bit of a challenge, I think, in the beginning of June to get a block done and then to have a taper, do something and then have a rest. Otherwise, yeah. this <clears throat> training site, I've got no I need a need to do something in okay. order to facilitate that taper, see where I'm at. And I don't yeah. think it's going to be, but I'll talk about that later. <laughs> Let's talk first time. Gary, this is the first time for you <clears throat> that we are going to talk about race results race results yeah well it's been race it's, results it's really been refreshing what is this thing we talk of <laughs> race results it has been refreshing on my timeline to see people's uh people getting ready for a race doing the kit the kit shot on the bed and stuff like that going to bed early having that kind of anxious That's feeling so and a few things i know <laughs> but a few things popped up what really caught my eye and one was um a guy called charlie parkinson who's a a mere 18 years old, nearly nearly 30 years my junior. Age of your he, kids. Yeah. <laughs> but he won the Pendleway Ultra, which I think there's various distances available, depending on what you go for, but I'm pretty sure he ran the 45-mile event. And again, if, if I've read the literature correct, it was a course record, seven hours, 15 minutes and 30 seconds. It was a good race, actually, because looking at a guy called Dave Motley, was second place, seven hours, 15 seconds, and 50, 15 oh. minutes, 
55 seconds, so only 25 seconds in it, over 45 do miles. Do you think, wide. do you think they ran that together and then there was a sprint finish? Oh, do you think, think there so. was a chase? Yeah. We need more deets. We're looking, we're hoping to have a chat with Charlie, aren't we? Yes, yes, he did. Re- the, the guys from the Pendle Wheel reached out to us, so we're just going to try and schedule something together. That would be really interesting to hear. You know, someone, when I was 18, I do, oh. I wasn't thinking about doing 45 mile ultra races. Um, I'd like to think I was active, but not like, not like that. So it'd be really interesting to hear kind of his point of view on training and racing. What else came up on my ra- Facebook radar was, uh, I'd heard of this through a friend of mine. It's an event by Mark Cockburn. And I think a lot of people will know he comes out with some. Pretty- a lot of people are scared of him. Yeah. Yeah. The hard stuff. I think that's his kind of tagline on his events. And this event was called the Runder Dome. And Forgive me if I completely mess this up, but from what I gather from the event is you, you enter this event <clears throat> and then you are given an alias. You're, you, so whoever you are, you, you get a kind of made up name. So you don't know who you're competing with. And then it's a knockout event. So you could be me versus you, but I could be called Superman and you could be called Wonder Woman. Wouldn't know who you were, but then they'd say run this distance or elevation or whatever it is over a set period of time. So you've got no idea who you're competing against and you could either run one mile and win, or you could run 200 miles and win. And then it's this knockout situation. Everybody then gets a new alias. So nobody knows who they're racing against. Um, so really crackers, what was, what was going on? In the and then challenge. when you've done one, one, you come back and you get another, what, another distance. Or yeah, so, if you, so, you, so you win that, your, your event that week. And you go through to the next level. Next round, a new challenge is set with a new batch of aliases. Um, so this nobody... sounds like something Netflix need to pick up. Yeah, like <laughs> one of these uh, Netflix or Amazon Prime TV shows. But then ultimately it did come down to, um, or what was the final, was basically run as many mi- miles as possible in 40 hours. And somebody who's kind of familiar with a lot of our listeners, a guy called Paul Nelson, won it. And he ran a staggering 183 Point six miles in 40 hours after doing all the other events previously to that <gasps> in second place sean nickel came second with 133 miles and 133.14 miles so oh my goodness me amazing stuff well done everybody who, who was even kind of dared to enter that to be honest i'm embellishing a bit but somebody might have run say whatever 100 miles but but they lost they because they didn't know who they were racing against. Um, the person who won didn't really kind of have to do so much. Well, say somebody might have ran one mile, but then the guy who won that tie or the woman who won that tie ran maybe say a hundred miles. When if they knew what the other person was up to, then they could have only done two miles and saved themselves a hell of a lot of kind of stress. <gasps> it's too much. I, I just couldn't get my head around that. As I was, I, it's too much for me. It's too much for me to even understand you explaining it. Let alone I know. Yeah. It. Hopefully it wasn't, it wasn't too confusing, but what also did pop up on my social media, which is quite nice. Uh, Sarah Perry, who's friend of the show, you know, comments quite a lot on our Facebook groups and uh, stuff like that. And there's competitions, which is quite nice. And she completed the Wainwrights coast to coast, in uh, 63 hours and 20 minutes and that started St. bees and she finished at robin hood robin hood bay in yorkshire so it's a quite a pretty place to finish so yeah well done sarah uh, now i like the sound of that race i could get involved in that yeah, but yeah. that's a good bet that you get you're running across amazing country there yeah yeah some of the pictures i saw uh luke her partner shared yeah, pretty spectacular place to go. And, um, you know, to be fair, I'm not that familiar with the middle, but the Yorkshire side, yeah. and the Lake District side, I'm, I'm quite familiar with, but the rest of it, um, yeah. It's one good. for your GoPro, that one, Gary. Yes. Oh, I did some more GoPro and I'm a Bob Graham leg five recce, so... Lots of people were keen on that. I I mocked you, and I uh, and lots of people like love to see that footage, Gary. Yeah, so well done, well done, Sarah. Well done, everybody. And when this goes out on Friday, we've got the Centurion uh, Southdowns Way Fifty, big. Normally, one of the biggest, the sort of big opener of the season, trail race in April. Um, so best of luck to everybody if you're running in that.
Uh, as I've said to lots of people that are getting back into racing, don't worry about less, quite a lot of stress about, you know, not done a race, I've forgotten how to race. But just look at it. Yeah. I would take the word race out of the whole thing and look at it as an adventure, a day out, forget all your problems, smile, you've got going to go out you can just totally turn off for the day you're on the trails nobody's going to mention pandemic covid <sighs> if you just ignore the fact you have to keep sanitizing your hands and <laughs> pretend that just you know just being really clean just really into cleaning and uh when we're trail running and just have a great day and just enjoy it for what it is and remember why we love it and also just embrace the pain the tiredness all those feelings you've not felt for so long and we've all been longing to fear to yeah. feel to go out and uh smile um it's so the icing on the cake isn't it the risk. icing on the cake and it doesn't matter just get to that finish get that medal next up we've got an interview with hannah basley who won the coaching prize in uh, a prize from me um and john back in christmas time of a few months coaching going into lakeland 50 and we actually decided we were going to follow hannah's journey for six months i had a chat with her a couple of uh, a month or so ago and this time we thought it'd be great if Gary caught up with her, as I kind of see hearing from her every day. Um, and Gary could get to know Hannah and we will see how she's doing, how the journey's going, the highs and the lows. So here we have the interview with Hannah. Hi, Hannah. Thanks for coming on uh, the show for a catch up. And how are you doing today? Yeah, good. Yeah. Snowed this morning. A bit of a yes, shocker after goodness. last week. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I woke up, looked out the window and thought, oh, <laughs> but got out with the girls. Well, the yeah. forecast was snow, but, you know, it's Saturday. I was just like, no, they've got it wrong. They've got it wrong. And but the, yeah, you're right. But yeah, it's nice to meet you last uh my goodness me, I've kind of heard you on the podcast, seen you on Strava, and I've seen you eating chicken charge bars, I think, on Instagram or on Strava or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to know where they come from. But yeah, really nice to meet you at last. Yeah, no, good to meet you too. So, Lakeland 50. I know, it's going to come around quick. I'm still excited. Gutted, <laughs> gutted the recce was cancelled the other day. Um, yeah, that was rotten. It's kind of popped up on social media, and I saw lots of people on my timeline were kind of umming and ahhing whether it should go or not, and I know... There's no right or wrongs. People do what they kind of want to do. I think the the guidelines were you could go. Obviously, then logistically, it's quite tricky for a recce for yourself because it was from Ambleside to Coniston. That's right. Yeah. And that goes, my goodness me. So you got Ambleside, and then is it Chap Chapel style? Is the kind yeah, of yeah, Chapel style to the point, is it? And then what's well, that about? 15 mile long that section or something? I think so. When I entered the recce, it said 18 miles, but adding yeah. up the different sections, it looked like it was more 15. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. And yeah, the last the last 15 that's usually <laughs> would be for the likes of me at, at night. <laughs> and that's, so you will be your kind of um, race aspirations, I suppose, you, you'll be in the night at that time. Yeah, I would have thought so. I'm not, I'm not that quick. <laughs> I mean, and, I said to Eddie, um, when I spoke to her a while back, I'd like to get under 16 hours. Yeah. I think 16 hours then gives me the option to enter the 100 next year. Oh. <laughs> just to go hardcore. But we'll yeah. see. Cool. I'd like to... You know, I mean, I might do the 50 and think never doing anything like that again. But yeah, my, my aim is to maybe step up to 100 next year. Yeah, I didn't realise yeah. that. So that is if you do it in 16 hours, then that gives you... I think, yeah, I think it, I'll have to check. But I, I think, yeah, it, you're allowed to enter the 100 if you've done the 15 under a certain time. And I think it's 16 hours. That's that's your only, I suppose, apart from completion, the, the 16 hours is your kind of um, yeah. goal. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and would the 50... You know, I don't know. Apologies, I should, maybe should know this, but would the 50, Lakeland 50, that be your longest race? Yes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> and why the Lakeland 50? Actually, funnily enough, I think it was um, last summer, I was watching, I was I was just going stir crazy. I was I was isolated from work. I was at home with the kids and I was watching lots of um, stuff on YouTube. And actually, it's <laughs> funny, a lot of the stuff I want to do is the stuff that I'd seen lots of, John Kiniston videos last yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's funny how things have kind of ended up working out. But he, yeah, yeah, he got a lot of sense of like a real passion for some of the races. So, yeah. and that was one of them. And then I saw the opening the ballot and I thought, shall I, shall I? And I thought, well, you'll regret <laughs> it if you don't. <laughs> yeah. So, it's yeah, I got, got a place. So oh, it's changed, I think, since I entered it. It was like the fastest on the computer basically got an entry. I think now it is it's just everybody goes into a ballot. Is that correct? Yeah, that's what I, I don't know if that's what they usually do, but I know yeah. they had less places because people carried over from last year. 
Um, so the places they had left were definitely a ballot. And I think there was an encouragement for like, I think women got a bit more of a priority in the ballot than men yeah. at most. I think they were trying to encourage more women to be in it. So yeah, yeah. cool. <laughs> And how's training going, you know? How are you finding everything, hitting the hills and stuff like that? Yeah, no, good. I mean, I live in a hilly area anyway. I live just south of Sheffield. So, yeah, plenty of hills. The Peak District is just, like, I say, a big run I did on Saturday was half an hour drive. So there are plenty of hills. There's, Mm. you know, reasonable hills around here. And then, as I say, driving to the Peak District, you can can find some belters. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. I spent some, I think, one New Year's Eve, I was in the Peak District. It was right on the Monsell Trail. Um, oh yeah and that was wonderful you know you could do your flat run if you wanted on the monsel trail and then head off it and you were up and down be... dales and <laughs> yeah it was wonderful and i was really curious because you are our kind of coaching uh client winner have you have you been coached before is, is, or, or is this the first time you've ever been a, a coached no. athlete no it's my first time yeah yeah that... i mean to be honest it's it's something i thought oh it'd be amazing to do but just never thought I'd, I'd be able to afford it. Yeah, and I've, I've always been rubbish at even sticking to training plans. Really. <laughs> so, I suppose I'm more, I've got someone to answer to this time. Um, oh, yeah, and accountability is is kind mm. of really powerful, whether it's just a social group or, or a coach. And also, I think it's, it's designed specifically for me. So when I've tried to do training plans before, I think I mentioned last time, I just end up going too crazy and getting injured. So. Yeah. So at least, yeah, this is just doing the sessions for me. And <laughs> a friend of mine, he's he's coached, and his coach gave him a kind of a, a benchmark test to see where he was at. It was a fast five k. He said, "Do a fast five k," and then he kind of worked out all of his kind of training paces from that. How how did you you and Eddie kind of come to a an a, a kind of agreement of workload? Um, so we've not got anything sort of spe- specific to, to actual timings, like to pace. Um, yeah. All the runs have worked out in time rather than distance, which I've not yeah. done before. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm doing tomorrow's run tonight because I'm working a long, long day tomorrow. So, yeah. so yeah, it will be like lots of a progression run of 20 minutes at a time yeah. um, rather than the mileage. Um but yeah, I mean, sometimes I probably on the pace go a little bit quick, <laughs> <laughs> and then I get a comment, "Typical Hannah." <laughs> uh. <laughs> so yeah, and I find it out by the end when I'm literally hanging. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it, I need sometimes I need to regulate my pace a bit more. I think. Yeah, um, and how are you finding the time over the distance approach to training? Yeah, I'm used to it now. Yeah. A lot of it, I'm trying to do it more by feel than just what, looking at my watch and seeing how yeah. far I've gone. Would you previously, you know, you'd done a, it's supposed to be a 16 mile run and you're at your front door and it was 15.98. Would you have run around the block to get oh, that God, extra? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I still, I have, there's a couple of times when I finished doing like, uh, I don't know, like a 45 minute run. Yeah. And at my sort of steady pace, it's it's come to like, just under four miles and they'll yeah. stop it and go, oh no I, can't, I should have carried on for a bit longer <laughs> We've all so, done yeah, it. I can't bear oh. it when it's like that <laughs> I think it's good you know the time I, I'm a pretty much uh previously I've been a slave to, to miles and then you know you see you hear quite often what other runners are doing and you think my goodness me they're doing these miles these miles but then if they're a, <clears throat> maybe a high level athlete the time it takes them to cover a mile is a lot faster than it was to you. So the accumulated time that they're working during the week is probably a lot yeah. less than what we yeah. people like us could be doing. So I think the time uh, approach is probably f- for people who kind of juggle busy lives. It's probably a good approach. Yeah, exactly. I've, I've got a friend that's training for an ultra around the same time, and she's done ultras before. And she was saying that she her training plan she's she's got that she starts will be at about 50 miles a week. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I just I genuinely don't think, A, I could fit it in, and B, I'm just, I'm not quick enough to fit something like 50 miles in. It's a lot of running, just, isn't it? Yeah. And how far ahead does, um, would Eddie send over the, the, the workouts? So, you know, I've never been coached myself. I've always been a self coach athlete, so I'm really curious <laughs> what it's like. Yeah, well, I think yesterday she sent through the next, I think, two or three weeks. Yeah. Um, and I've gone and bought a kettlebell as well. So she's a. Uh, oh, yeah. She set me up a, a, a session to do later in the yeah, week. So that's been, I've been sitting there this afternoon watching YouTube videos on what on, what on earth to do <laughs> for all these different things with the kettlebell. 
I think they're really yeah. popular and the, 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 the nature of how you pick them up isn't like, a, say, a bar or a dumbbell where it's pretty much you kind of have to force to have your hands in a certain position, for example, while a kettlebell maybe mimics something kind of more natural lifting, I suppose. And how are you finding the training load? Is this more maybe than, you, than you've done in the past? Um, possibly similar, more, more strength. Yeah. Um, I've always been rubbish at doing strength. And actually, I've not done much the last couple of weeks. So there was, I meant to do one the other day. And by the time I got home from my parents and it was yeah. gone nine o'clock. And then by the time I put the kids to bed, I was just, just to go to bed myself. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's trying to fit that in as well. It's the easiest thing to kind of drop, which isn't good. You're right. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't do any strength conditioning until it was just kind of repeated injuries made me yeah. think i've just got to do this because i was missing too much time doing the thing i love which was running because i was injured and i really do think the strength and conditioning although i never feel strong i think it's maybe like a hidden resilience but you you know you yeah. made a good point there you know visiting parents and stuff like that how are you find and fit, fitting it all in is it um a problem or you think you're managing okay it's most of the time i manage sometimes i have to juggle shifts around like not shifts like sessions around so as I say, tomorrow I'm working at least 11 hours. It'll yeah. probably be longer because it's the day after a bank holiday weekend. Yeah. yeah and I'll be okay. on my feet pretty much all day. Oh my goodness, yeah. So I was like, do I get up super early and do an hour and 20 minute run in the morning? Or do yeah. I just do it the evening before and then I don't have to stress yeah. tomorrow? And, and Eddie, that's fine, this kind of flexibility to move the yeah. workout? Yeah, I mean, you know, she knows she's got three young kids. So she, she, yes. she knows she, whenever I've mentioned anything, she's like, look, Got plans got to suit you yeah yeah so yeah as long as i think as long as i don't do two intensive sessions one after the other so yeah so i mean yesterday i just had a sort of gentle half hour on the turbo um just to loosen my legs up a bit yeah today will be fine then tomorrow will be well take a rest day from training but not <laughs> anything else <laughs> and then i'll get back onto it on wednesday and is there any Maybe there isn't, fingers crossed there isn't, but is there any weaknesses that you kind of, when you've been training, you think, oh, I wish I could run up a hill faster. I wish I could even just run up a hill as opposed to walk. Is anything that's kind of highlighted when, as you've been going along, you think you'd, you'd like to work on? I don't know. I mean, some of the hills, I'm quite happy just to, to walk up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, some of the steeper ones on, I did on Saturday, it was, yeah. yeah, it was a real effort just to, you know, it's like, quite steep hands on knee hands on thighs pushing myself up yeah, so yeah. I can't imagine running up those anyway so I'm quite happy not to um yeah. I'm really rubbish at downhills yeah uh <laughs> most of us yeah. are <laughs> yeah. yeah I don't I think I've got I think I'm too old now to suddenly suddenly find a bit of courage <laughs> and go for it but when um, you fall over it really hurts so I just try and my best not to fall over <laughs> Yeah, I know. And I've got a history over years, not just from running, but of like turning my ankles. So I know I've got a bit yeah. of a weakness there. Yeah. Um, I sort of, I turned one of my ankles about three times last year oh my within, a, within like a couple of months. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, and I, I tend to do it when I take, when I just lose concentration for a moment. Yeah. So it would be like, if I'm wearing my glasses, do they steam up or... Yeah get rained on or if i just look over at something yeah take yeah. my eye off and that's it it just goes um mm -hmm. so the thought of bombing down a hill is just yeah which is probably why almost my my quads are still slightly <laughs> tight from saturday because i just pick my way down and <laughs> well i was good yeah i was gonna ask you about the um how it went with the, with the amber side recce but obviously that wasn't called off but yeah you had a, a big day in the Peak District, yeah. was it 20, 20, 20 miles, I think I saw on Strava? Yeah, and... just, yeah, just over 20 miles, I think over 3,500 feet of ascent, which is... Oh, good. that's a good day. That wouldn't yeah. have been far off what you would have probably done on the uh, the recce, I think. Yeah. Like, that, that section on the Lakeland 50 isn't particularly... It's all hilly, but in the scheme of the lakes, I think that's probably not such a bad section, to be honest. Yeah, I looked at, I looked at how, what the elevation was like. And the mileage and then I, I sat there with my os app plotted out and i was like yeah that would do <laughs> excellent well i did notice that you had a pr on up the steps on your strava yeah, yeah. <laughs> well i only walked up them they're, they're, they're right next to a derwent dam yeah it literally takes you from the bottom of the dam up to the top up to the, like the reservoir level so okay yeah i did realize i was going to get a i wasn't aiming for record i was just 
Yeah, yeah it's nice I to get a... those steps. <laughs> 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 I, I, I just I wonder is that so if you were going to the peaks because these little PRs, you know, they're individual little milestones. And quite good to look back on. Would you say then that is a progression in fitness or it's just it just happened on the day? It was just a, a nice coincidence. It probably just happened. I mean, I don't know if I've ever... I'm trying to think of... Yeah, a couple of times that I've been up there. One was um, at my first ever proper trail race. Yeah. Um, and that was just after the start as well. Um, and I was just taking it easy. And I think the other time was a recce for that. Yeah. So yeah, another time I've been at them before, just like with the kids and stuff. Yeah. Because it's a it's a cool place to go, and it you know they've got a, they've got the visitor centre there, so you've got, you've got the refreshments and the loo. Oh yeah. And the thing, so. <laughs> I love that side of things. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's handy handy for the kids. It's it you know, and it's it's a sort of place though. On a bank holiday, you can't go unless you go early because it's. Yeah. Yeah. Like coming out, there was cars everywhere. Oh my goodness, yeah. Awful, so. <laughs> well, we went to Keswick um, to do a leg one of the Bob Graham round. And, I, you know, me and my friend, we decided to go really early to beat the traffic because we just thought it would be, with the, everything kind of after the 29th, the kind of travel uh, bannered kind of ended as such. And it was really quiet. <laughs> Keswick was, yeah. Was, was, yeah, it was really, the market wasn't on and it was, it was kind of, eerie but uh yeah it's pretty bizarre but your pictures that you took um from your big run yesterday look looked amazing and so you've you've already mentioned that your quads are kind of a bit beat up but how did you find the the, the day itself with 20 miles lots of hills it's, it's quite a big deal yeah i've really enjoyed it i mean obviously some of the hills you a bit hard work getting up but yeah. actually after a while i mean i you know to be fair i felt i could have carried on if i wanted to yeah um, but I think the last descent back down to the reservoir level, that it's really steep. So I think that kind of, I was feeling pretty finished off <laughs> at that point. <laughs> but until then, I could have carried on. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's good. And I felt all right yesterday, apart yeah. from the fact that my daughter, my youngest, who's eight, she's so excited about Easter. She, she came in at was it half or well, half three I can't even she came in almost hourly <laughs> like about half three or half four because she was just too excited about getting all these eggs. yeah I yeah. could have done without that the morning <laughs> after but apart from that I felt all right I mean I do get I sort of discussed with Eddie last week when I do a longer thing I get yeah. slightly my lower back is just a bit twingy the day after oh, that's interesting um, and when I did that that crazy middle of the night run that my mum told me off about. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was really quite twingy. Um, yeah. But actually, it was yesterday morning. It was a bit twingy, but yeah. nowhere near as bad as it has been. And it by by lunchtime, it was fine. And do you find the time to form roll and stuff like that? I know we all give up this advice, but yeah, do we always do it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got a foam roller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm not. I'm not very good at all that. I bought a massage gun. I don't know if you've listened to the podcast uh, last week. Yeah, it, uh, it, it, it arrived, and um, it's actually quite aggressive. <laughs> it's quite, <painful. laughs> and I can't use it um, with the foam roller. It's like silent, so we can all be say, maybe watching TV, and I can be on the carpet rolling my back. But no, it's quite distracting for everybody else. So yeah, recovery. You've said your quads a bit uh, tough, but you've been on the turbo trainer today, is that correct? Oh, no, yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. sorry, okay. And then today I was out with the girls um, in the in the Peak District, yeah. walking around Longshore. Oh, nice. Biting my nails as they climbed up the top of trees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it that was it. bitterly cold up there, though. But yeah, no, so that, I suppose at least, yeah, I've not been sitting around today, so at least I've got yeah. out. And... Well, I hear that quite often, just movement um i think it promotes blood flow and then recovery you know i've got no coaching qualification or anything like that so but yeah i do hear this quite often on podcasts that just just keep moving i think that's a good thing to do and yeah do, do, do you have to do you have like a an outline for a for, for kind of a, a week you know you've got your runs your bike rides and maybe some strength and conditioning do, do you have a kind of framework for a bit for a, a basic week yeah, so usually there's either some sort of different pace run or hills, yeah. sort of generally one or the other. So this week it's a progression run. 
next week there's some hill efforts there's a long run there's a couple of like sort of easy run easy stroke recovery runs and um a session on the turbo yeah and so, some of them are quite full on <laughs> eddie eddie likes a bike it's like a turbo <laughs> yeah so uh yeah they're quite fun i shut myself away with a drink and the fan on me and uh put something on the phone on, on to watch and yeah it's quite fun. I, I enjoy it though and it, i actually like the turbo if i've got intervals to do because yeah. Otherwise, it's just mind numbing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I like to have something to do, but yeah, that's and then there's usually like a couple of strengths a week, sort of on top of that. Usually after a recovery run, it would yeah. have be a strength, and then a couple of rest days as well. And when you're on the turbo, you said you kind of got it rigged up so you've got a distraction. Are you? Is it like a Netflix? You binge watching on Netflix or something? Or yeah. oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> come on then, spill the beans. What you're watching? <laughs> oh no, well. Um, I started watching when I was on it yesterday. My octopus teacher. Oh, I've heard about quite that. interesting. I've heard about, is it the guy? He's a uh, is he a cameraman? And then he yeah yes, yeah. and he kind of befriends an octopus. Yeah, which is random. Um, but yeah, I started started watching that yesterday. Um, mm. I will confess, uh, before that I was watching. I watched Bridgerton. <laughs> well, I've watched it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, uh, I think I mentioned before, it's difficult to tell who was puffing away more, the characters or me. During <laughs> those sessions. Well, I was really embarrassed. I was watching it with the family. My daughter, um, teenage daughter, she she watched it and there were some scenes where I was kind of didn't know where to put my put my head. It was... <laughs> <laughs> I was warned, though. I was warned some racy scenes were coming, some racy episodes were coming. So I was, I was prepared for it. But, yeah, pretty good. Yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I don't want to attempt, well, we'll talk about the Ambleside recce and it didn't happen, but have you got anything else, any other recce's booked up or anything like that beforehand uh, or, or just some more day, days in the deals? Um, I've got, I think, late May, um, there's the, the other recce that is planned, um, the yeah. official one. I think that's the first part of the route. Okay, um, so that's Dale Main to... Where would that be? Mardale Head, is it? Or Howtown? Um, well, it said it's to Ambleside, but that would make it very long. Wow. Then <laughs> 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 so we'll see. We'll yeah. see. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, and then I'm going to go back up in June. I've got a weekend because it's trying to find time. My husband works two out of four weekends anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I've got a weekend in June, which I think will be about four weeks before yeah. the day. Oh, me so too. But actually, if, it, if it's a relatively easy day on the like around the lakes, just to kind of get the navigation at least kind of dialed in, that would be quite good. To, to do yeah. That. What about races? Have you got any races? Um, not to race, but just to kind of have a that day race day experience. Have you got any of those booked in? Well, I'm thinking of doing one in June, actually, <laughs> the weekend before the recce, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is like a lapped one. I think it's like four mile laps, and you can do as much as you want. In it's like a it's, quite hilly it's outside chesterfield yeah oh, cool. um do as many laps as you can in six hours so ah. that might be quite quite fun yeah i was originally that... going to be doing that um a couple of weeks ago when i did my nighttime run but obviously it had to be postponed um, yes yes and it's a guy that organized my first ultra back in october as well oh brilliant so, yeah that it's sounds really good. local event would be nice I like those things. The the Northeast Marathon Club, Club, which is close to us, they do these basically do as much or as little as you want in six hours. It's quite it's quite good, and people do them for they just do the marathon. I say just it's crazy. You say just do a marathon, but they'll do a marathon, or they may go on and on and on and do two marathons. It's if they if they're super fast. Lakeland 100. You you alluded to earlier that uh, a future a future goal, and so that so fingers crossed if all goes well. 20 my goodness 2021 you'd be in the ballot for for, for 2022 or maybe a, a little bit a few a few years down the line yeah i'd like to i mean i've got different things i've been looking at doing um there's different hundred miles <laughs> oh yeah come on then i love all this that, that <laughs> i know it's crazy i mean as i say i could do the 50 and think oh stop that i'm going step back down to marathon distance or something <laughs> but um yeah i mean i've got I really want to do one day the spine race, but 
but mm. I want to do the summer one so I can admire the scenery a bit more. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you get much daylight in the, uh, the winter one. It just looks really miserable to do yeah. that in February. Um, hats off yeah. to these guys. Oh, yeah. Well, okay, watch this space. Fantastic. Anything else? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, so maybe, I mean, another option in the next couple of years would be to do the, the challenger distance. Yes. Um, I looked at the sprint. They've got a sprint distance this year, and I thought, oh, I did that, <laughs> that entire route over two different times Yeah. Um, last year. So I messaged Eddie, and I was like, what do you think? Would it be? And she was like, no, <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> it would affect your training for the Lakeland 50 another time. Yeah, yeah fair enough. That's true. <laughs> I said, I knew you'd say that. So <laughs> getting a bit too keen. And is there any, you know, money's no object, time's no object, a, a bucket list race that you think, you know, anywhere in the world you could, could go to? Um, to be honest, I've not, I don't know if there is really. There's lots of ones in the UK that look amazing. Yeah. So I'm not, I've not been a big traveller anyway. Um, yeah. So mainly it's the UK, you know, like I say, my, my main one really is the spine race in the summer. Um, yeah. So that that'd be really cool to do. I always I know this podcast run of the hills, but I always fancy the Grand Union Canal race. I'm not too sure why. <laughs> Just oh, uh, running. I think you run. Is it? Oh my goodness me! Um, Liverpool or Leeds or something. One of them two, right in the middle of London. And I did it once. I did a section of it. I was in. Slough for some reason, and I ran from Slough to Paddington Station. I just thought, my this whole country is just connected by these canals, and it was yeah, it was flat. But I just thought, yeah, that'd be pretty, quite a, quite a big, quite a big challenge. I also yeah. like the idea of the uh, West Highland Way race, which I know was a favourite of John's. So that would be a nice one day to. Yeah, to that's that's one of the sort of in the region of a hundred miler that I like to do. Yeah. And the North Downs way, because we used to live down down south. Um, and me and my husband, pre-children, in sections, because it was so accessible, walked it. So I'd like oh, to do the, the Centurion, do that one. So yeah. one day I'd like to do the North Downs way 100. Excellent. So, yeah. And what is training looking like for this week then? What have you got on the cards this week, training? You've, well, you've, you've said you're going to do your 20-minute threshold threshold run. Well, it's progression run, so it's like 20 minutes really easy, 20 minutes easy, 20 minutes steady, which for me ends up going very quick, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, 20 minutes really easy again. So I've got to just pace myself a bit on that third one, because I'm doing it from home. It's quite hilly, so I've just got to manage my efforts up the hills, really. Yeah. Um, would you do that with the heart rate monitor? Is, is that how you man manage your effort? or? Um, yeah, I mean, I probably ought to get a strap, really. Because it, it's not really that reliable on my wrist. And also, I know, I hate it, like, just, you know, obviously on a steep hill, on a big effort, on a big run, you have to walk. But I don't want to have to stop and walk on, <laughs> on just, like, local streets. <laughs> yeah. Down. I know, I, you know, it's, it's, it's a good thing to do to manage your, your heart rate levels. And, I mean, I do, even before Eddie started coaching me, I did start to moderate my efforts a bit more and not just... Yeah. Go out at always the same pace and always, do you know what I mean? Actually going out for really easy efforts. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it's really important. Honestly, we've not, I've not done this yesterday um, for some reason. I'm not too sure not. But on a Sunday, I would normally do a, with a friend, we do like a weighted vest hike. So just to kind of simulate maybe along the out with a backpack on and stuff like that, but just not not running. Um, and yeah, and uh, my quads aren't beat up from it. I think it's been quite beneficial just to kind of keep the legs moving. Yeah, I really enjoyed this catch up. Keep the pictures coming off up on Strava. <laughs> it's been, <laughs> I love all that kind of stuff. I'm rubbish at all that. You know, my Strava is pretty dull. Anyone who follows me, I don't even change the title of the run half the time. But uh, yeah, thank goodness. Afternoon people like run, you. morning run. <laughs> yeah, morning run. Yeah. <laughs> It's been great to have a catch up. Um, you take care and thanks again for coming on, Hannah. Cheers. All right. Cheers, Gary. Thanks. All Bye. Right, Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Hannah. It was great to have a catch up and good luck with all your future training. What next, Eddie? So I thought now we'd have a little chat about 
what how to train for hills when you don't have access daily access to hills um and you've entered some hilly races because we love doing that as trail runners entering races which we can in no way shape or form easily train for and making our life more complicated but at the end of the day we all love a bit of vert because what goes up must come down and there's nothing better than flying down a lovely, smooth, single track on oh, battered yeah. quads. <laughs> uh, and as you're doing the Bob Graham, we thought as well, we can pick at your training a little bit. Um, see how you're doing with that. And <laughs> I'm going to tell you off. Um, so you're doing, and I've got a few ideas. I've coached quite a few. I've, I've coached quite a few Londoners to, um, to UTMB success that have yeah. had limited access to trails and things like that. So there is ways you can do it. There is ways you can replicate the hills. It's never going to be as much as it sold you. It's never going to be perfect. Um, yeah. If you can get to trails, you can, but I think there are lots of things that you can do. So what are you doing at the moment to sort of harden off those, well, those quads? Pre, you know, when we were in kind of travel ban, I would be pretty local. Um, so, I'd usually have three, what I'd say, quality sessions a week. And they usually would be, say, some kind of threshold run and an interval session, then your long run. I sometimes would maybe swap one of those runs for like a hilly fartlek session around our nature reserve. And all of my, pretty much all of my easy runs are in the nature reserve too, which, you know, you can be in there for, my goodness me, if you pick two hills, two, two of the most efficient hills, you can be in there for, and get some pretty serious vert. But any one time the hills don't go on for that long, you maybe maybe a minute and a half. So you've not got that say lake district long kind grind. of climbing. Yeah. So typically what we do in normal like say now that we can travel. So we'll do a threshold run or an interval session, and then maybe some kind of a fart leg session. Um and then we'd hit the kind of serious hills at the week end. And ideally I have this kind of I'm not too sure why, but I have a kind of ten thousand feet a week um, target. No, but I think that's a great target. I do think that, I think it's realistic that you can recover from that once you've built up to that. Yeah. Uh, but it's, a, it's enough. I think it's enough. But the easy stuff, you know, I always do with the dog. So it was super, super easy uh, on, mm. on the trails. I try not even sometimes see Rex can stop for a sniff or something halfway up a hill. I don't beat myself up when it's not a workout. Um, it, it, you know, really take it as it is. Try not to get tired. Even sometimes walk up the hills, but yeah, just trying to do my easy runs on those kind of hilly trails. And then now at least we've got the luxury we can travel again and do some big climbing in the weekend. And, you know, you're always trying to second guess your training and going back to say with our chat with Sabrina a few weeks ago, she, she lives over there and kind of, I got the impression from what she was saying that it's a kind of a daily thing for her to have access to mm, this mm, kind of landscape. Mm. But, you know, I don't have that, so I can't dwell on it. <laughs> Just have to do. No, and actually, if you do live, so for me, the vert here is really easy to get. I mean, my easy runs, I can easily get a thousand feet in a mile. You know, it's it, actually for me, it's much harder to get the balance between losing my speed hmm. from getting too much vert because I could go out and get fifty thousand feet of climbing a week, yeah. which would make me really good at climbing, but I'd lose my running efficiency and economy and that's what it's all about and that's yeah. where you've got a really good balance at the moment it's going to have to swing towards the vert for you in the next few weeks as you're approaching your bob graham to, to really condition those muscles but what the way you are good at running uphill is by being an efficient um and economic economic runner so that your your every bit that you're moving forward is propelling you well up the hill and that's why often people that are really good runners you can then they can then run uphill really well the first thing you should do is work on your efficiency and your economy as runners so you don't actually need hills to start off with you just add in a little bit of strides yeah. add in that leg turnover add in thinking about your running form and a really simple way to think about your running form is to relax your shoulders and imagine you've got a golden i don't know why i always say golden thread <laughs> feels sort of mystical pulling up uh pulling up through the top of your head and oh look there you go you sat up straighter yeah. um and it pulls you up really nice and tall so you're starting running up the hill in that really good your core's engaged your glutes are relaxed your shoulders are down you're starting in that really good position and if you start feeling like that when you run your strides and yeah. you do you know, 20 30 seconds and you get that feeling of being strong then when you put that into a little hill 
you're that strong runner already. If you start trying to run uphill without that strength, and you, which we all do when we've been running up hills for a while, and we become the hunchback of the Notre yeah. Dame, and um, we hunch over, and our lungs are then pressed down. We can't get the oxygen in. We everything sort of goes out the back rather than being held underneath it. So. I always say, if, you, if you're living somewhere, you haven't got any hills, work on that running efficiency and economy and make yeah. yourself the fastest runner that you can be. And then when you move into hills, mm. you're supporting yourself already because you're strong. Work on your, co work on your core. Core yeah. work is going to make you a better hill runner, just like you do. There's lots of strength work that you can do as well with your quads. Yeah. Um, I don't really, there's kind of loads of stuff that you can go into that. But basic, really basic is squats. Yeah. Uh, squats, lunges, anything. If you're used to doing a bit of um, body weight or a bit of weighted um, work, adding in a bit of plyometrics, because that's something, yeah. especially on something like the Grob Bob Graham round with the downhill, the quick foot speed yeah, um, and the ability to change direction, to change, to jump, to turn, to twist yeah. is going to help you not only move faster, but prevent twisting that ankle as you're coming off the oh i, I do kind of i think i touched on this a bit with the chat with hannah that I, I do think all of the um strength and conditioning work i've done it's like an invisible strength almost but i do feel like see every now and again if i'm potentially going to roll an ankle it hasn't manifested into an injury um and i think that's this kind of in, invisible Durability it's invisible you can... work. You can't see it when you're doing it. It's like a wobble board is great for that as well. Getting yeah. your ankles on a wobble board and doing some ball back. And you can make it kind of fun. So it's a bit different from, you know, normal strength and conditioning, but anything to get those ankles rotating and to get the brain talking to the ankles. Yeah. Um, and if you really, if you really are in the depths of none, just using like the bridges um, over the Thames, to practice doing to move your strides onto like a little bit more of uphill car park ramps yeah. anything like that and don't think oh i haven't got well it's no point because i haven't got a 60 minute climb just do your strides just do them uphill um yeah, we, yeah. Uh, another <clears throat> a good session to do this is this is quite um this is quite advanced time training plan but i love this one okay, it's a kenyan hills session you run up and down the hill at a strong pace and also that pace can get quicker the more that you do it yeah for say i normally start with about six minutes you can work that up to eight minutes to 10 minutes um and you keep the effort up and down up and down so instead of like our normal hill reps where you'd go up strong and then you yeah. jog down this one you keep the intensity up and down so you try and go um, up and down in the same so you go up in two minutes you come down in two minutes is that roughly yeah 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 you probably come down a little bit quicker okay. um you don't want to sprint down but you just want to keep the intensity and then after six minutes you sort of jog down to the bottom walk around gather yourself a couple of minutes you do again you try and match the same rep so if you go off too fast in the first one you're going to pay for it so it's all about control as well but it, it really works on your weaknesses um yeah. if you're not that confident about going downhill you're going to know because you're going to be like i'm not that much quicker going down i could feel myself breaking so it's a great way to practice it's a great way to practice going downhill under stress as well yeah. we don't yeah. do that as british runners we don't practice our downhill out of breath ever um yeah. But the Europeans would do that all the time. Um, so it's a good way to... <gasps> and you're having to move and you're having to make changes. Um, and then, yeah, have a little walk. Maybe do it again. Maybe do it three times. So all depending on your sort of level. I mean, you could start off doing it for just like three minutes. <clears throat> but um, normally, it's it's because it's a steady effort rather than a flat out effort. It normally, it feels okay. It's a good session. You come away, you're tired the next day the next day you can have you can really give yourself some good jobs so sessions like that i always think if you're training for hills in a flat land or you can't get to hills regularly the only limit is your imagination you just need yeah. to think of ways to replicate it but if you start with that premise of i'm going to make myself a really strong efficient runner i'm not going to overcomplicate this i'm just going to work on the strides i'm going to move the strides into a little bit of incline yeah. and then going to add a little bit more hills protecting that form because it's all about who can hold that form together the longest going up the hill yeah if you've got access to a treadmill it's i mean that's gold dust if i was going to yeah. be doing utmb or ccc or one of the big mountain races and i lived in um anywhere where i couldn't get you know two thousand feet of vert easily i would just get on that treadmill 
whack it up 10% whack and up, just yeah. grind it out, grind it out. You need to be a little bit more savvy with your training when you're trying to tra train for a hills because you need that recovery afterwards, but you need those long days in the hills. So you yeah. really need to per periodize your training really well. Whereas if you're training for a marathon, it's got it's kind of like pretty self-explanatory, the box that you need to put yeah. in. But then if you know like, well, only next weekend I can get to, I can actually drive and got four or five hours in the hills. Yeah. That's going to then affect my whole week after. So you've got to be really clever with your train, with your planning. Definitely doable, but it just, it's just, you just got to be more of a thinking runner, I think. I was curious whether I, on some marathon plans that I've done, you've say I had one quality session, then a, a medium long run, kind of midweek. And I was thinking, do I maybe swap say the threshold run for argument's sake and maybe do a longer hillier this midweek long run maybe say 12 mm. 30 miles but maybe go to the moors and do a kind of yeah i lift. love i love in the depth of a plan a midweek long run because i think um i think you know just for like two or three weeks for 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 people that have done a lot of running um to, is it a, a good way to add a little bit more volume but yeah. it's not a session so it's not like mentally like you've got to get yourself up for another session it yeah. can also have, it can be a bit more of a like you know, cruisy recovery vibe, but you're still, you're going up and down because yeah. that's the effort you're going to be doing at the Bob Graham. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. So actually working that there's, you're not, not by, you're not dropping a session. It's still, a, it's actually a good, you can get out on the fells now with more light hmm. and an undulating vibe, recovery vibe, i.e. just <clears throat> easy. It's enjoyable. Um, and it's not going to trash you. That's why I was saying like recovery. So you don't want to come yeah. away from that going oh, only two days <laughs> off and then I'm going to miss another, you know, so just yeah. easy. I think, yeah, right now where you are, it's perfection. A good session. I used to like, well, I don't know the mechanics behind a lot of these sessions. I kind of rely on the coach here at Sedgefield and he used to say it was a, a loop they did. And the hill was at an incline where you could maybe hit your marathon pace. So it wasn't too steep. You could really put some good effort in. But he also, what he said was, so it was like a, a loop and you go up the hill and then but he said, don't stop at the top of the hill. Maybe go 100 meters past the hill. I love this. And yeah. then just kind of jog, complete the loop, jog to the bottom and then repeat. And I, I love that because... That's just... a real, I love that. And as runners, we are so guilty when we do hill work of you work to the peak yeah. and then you allow your body to recover. But we never... That's not how we run. That's not how we yeah. race. So, yeah, I love that. I love the run up the hill at a steady effort and then hold that form under stress and yeah. teach the body that now it has to recover while you continue moving. And that is, that's brilliant. That's really good. And we often neglect that part of our training. Yeah. That's why, sorry to sell it, but cycling is so good because when you get to the top of a hill, you have to carry on pedaling. Otherwise, you'll yeah. fall off your bike. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> that's why. Uh, uh, that that's that's awesome um if you can put that into your running as well yeah we i used to do loads of that when i was a triathlete for that strength you'd need um running off a bike run up a hill and then carry on and and as we got further and further into the training block when i used to do iron man oh god uh that long that run used to get longer and longer off the top of the hill so you okay. almost the hill became just the small part of the training <laughs> and then you'd end up doing like a two mile tempo run yeah. off the top of it but yeah that's another that's another great way mm -hmm. of training your body to be more efficient what, what kind of uh, say a 50 mile race how many times up a, a hill of say, I don't know, a quarter of a mile would you recommend? You don't want to overdo it. I always stick to, I used to stick to about say 20, 20, between 20 minutes and a half an hour of, of work. Totally. I'm always at the, I'm always at that one too. That sort of intensity and as well, your calves, your calves and your sort of posterior chain is working really hard going up a hill. Yeah. And if your core isn't quite as strong as you'd like it to be, then yeah. um, you're going to start to fatigue and that's when injuries kick on. So I would start, I would start with hills. I do a little, I do a little bit less than with a flattish session. Yeah. Most people, once they're sort of fit and they're working towards 50 miles, should be able to hold about 30 minutes worth of quality work with recovery. Yeah. whereas hills because they have that impact and they're harder and I, and I always prefer people to run a hill well than slogging up it yeah. teach what your body what you want it to do in a race even then when you get to the race we're like oh my god I'll fall in the park. so yeah I'd start with I'd start with like 10 minutes of hill work if that and then slowly build yeah. that up and you can build it up quite quickly because you're um if you start less you get 
you know, you're less of that impact. You're not going to have such a recovery process needed. Better, as I always say, to have consistency than to do one massive session and yeah. then <laughs> end up uh, two weeks later still scarred by it. I sometimes find in the nature reserve, especially that sometimes the hills are so steep that I can't really get the quality form. Don't be scared. Again, an often frequent conversation. Don't be scared to switch to that power hike. This is, you should be really working on that now. I know you do with your weighted vest, Gary. Yeah. Um, um, that power hike. I mean, really anything that gets you more than heavy breathing, you know, that you're going to take time <clears throat> to recover, you should switch to the power hike. And, and loads of people don't, you know, if I've been running 50 miles or hundred miles and people are running up a hill, unless you're Jim Wormsley or yeah. Beth Pascal, you need to be walking up that hill to keep that heart rate low. Um, because the mi- you burn that match. Yeah. <laughs> it's gone. You're not going to get that back. So yeah. you want to work, um, work on that power hiking making yourself as efficient as possible and not be scared and i've said this to hannah not be scared you know you, if you run up the first 20 seconds of a hill switch to a hike bring that heart rate back you might you're not then have to hike the rest of it you might then it might yeah. plateau out a bit you might have all these strings in your bows that you can switch in and out but the most important thing is getting to the top and being able to carry on running if you get to the top and be like oh is the only one running up that hill oh yeah and then yeah. you'll be the one laughing won't you come 40 miles when you're you can't even run on the flat i've got a friend who i run with quite often and he likes to power hike you know pretty pretty as if it's going up a, anything that resembles a hill he'll start walking quick yeah I'll be thinking i'm running and i'll look around and he's literally just snapping up my heels and i'm thinking Oh my goodness, I've just got... I'm you've got walk. it. If you've got a great power hike, yeah. it's amazing. Uh, I, have to, I have to do that little run just to keep up with his hike. <laughs> when I go to the hike, I really slow down. I just haven't... And even though I do are the you using, best, Are you using poles for your Bob Graham round? No, 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 it's no. Maybe I should. Maybe I should. Uh, but then I've got to kind of learn how to use them properly. Yeah, so I think, yeah, it's a whole other podcast. Le yeah. Baton. <laughs> This weekend when we're going up the lakes, it's going to be a big day. We're going to do oh. all of leg four. Yeah, leg, yeah. Oh, so I love leg four. leg four. But we're going to run from Honister, maybe do a chunk of leg three, then join leg four at Wasdale, and then finish back at Honister. Would you think, you know, we're, we're what, maybe seven weeks out from the Bob Graham. I'm conscious that, is that too much or is that appropriate? I think that's good. I think that's exactly where you want to be. Yeah, exactly where you want to be. Enough that you're really going to have to feed yourself well. You're going to have to ha- do a bit of kit pack management. You're going to yeah. know yeah. foot. You know, you've got to harden off your feet a bit now too, haven't you? Because you've not been out on, you know, all that di- all the different hot spots you might get. I think yeah. that's really good. Um, and <clears throat> especially like with your London trip, you've not battered yourself. Um, oh, I don't know. So I've much had tarmac in- for yeah so exactly so like get off get out in the fells and enjoy like um a bit of a change and then let that reflect at the beginning of next week and then you've still got long enough that Mm. you'll be you can recover and you still can then probably do another one more one or two more long days before the big event hopefully if you've got any learnings or you might go god i was knackered after five (laughs) hours i've got to really look like look at my nutrition or look at the way that i'm doing this or or the trainers you know there's there's lots of things you can still find out and then change in training and then still improve rather than doing it three weeks out when really it's all like you're not going to have another chance you should be tapering then you You should have should be starting to think about i do like getting to the maybe this would be a tip for people if they're training for a long day out that Get to the beginning of the the leg, for example, with some fatigue in your legs already. Like we're going to run, we're gonna, probably going to get to Wasdale, maybe have ten miles in our legs, um, and then try and assess how you feel during that leg, as opposed to doing it fresh and kind of. You know, mm, that's so- a really, especially if you've got to travel there. That's yeah. a really great idea. Um, and often the start of the legs as well, they direct inject up the vert, aren't they? So a bit of a little leg bit always. of. Uh, you bar straight, straight up, up, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> so, if you can have a bit of a warm up into that, you're going to feel so much better as well going yeah, up it yeah. than um, than just getting out your car after a four hour drive and then. I'll tell you next week. <laughs> so, in the spirit of all things hills, this week we would like to hear from you. 
what are the best sessions that you've done uh, to prepare yourself for a hilly race? I'll pop a post on Facebook with maybe an example of a session that I've done uh, before a hilly race. And if you've got any great sessions that you do that uh, perhaps if you do live in London or somewhere flat and you can't get out to the hills regularly, uh, we'd love to hear them. And I'm sure lots of people would love to read them. Um, and then we can write them all down and write a coaching manual, Gary, yeah. which... Going to business. Uh, <laughs> going to business. Uh, 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 yeah, anything that's worked any, or any, any funny anecdote, if you've ever done a Kenyan Hill session, how you felt after it. And the competition will uh, close... 27th. 27th of April. So you've got two yeah. weeks again. We like a two-week one now. And it's a box of Chia Charge goodies. Again. Oh, do you know, I just had, so I, I, as I said earlier, my day has just been fraught and I haven't had time to um, feed myself properly yet. And I just had a Chia Charge white chocolate and raspberry protein crunch bar. Have you had one of those, Gary? <clears throat> I do like the protein ones. The chocolate oh, chocolate I love, I mean, the pro I don't eat the protein ones very much when I'm trait as I'm training, because they're quite yeah. dense, aren't they? You need a lot of m moisture, <laughs> but as a mid-morning snack... I mean, it's hitting the spot. It's hitting every, the taste sensation. 20 grams of protein. Yeah. That with a cuppa. So I've said I've not had lunch, but I have had that. And it's, it's pretty dense, aren't they? I hit the, um, as I was, just when I got the Honestar, I hit the, the classic original Chia Charge with the sea salt in it before I headed I mean, back up to Dale. I mean, you can't go wrong with the absolute classic, can old you? Old school, yeah. Absolute old school, but good. Was it the full full size or was it the... no i think it's the kind of three quarter bars whatever they are it didn't look as massive as i remember the when i used to buy chia charge have you eaten have you eaten the big one all at once ever no <laughs> there's only oh, been a few times when I used to i've actually shoved the whole thing in my mouth and thought as my mum used to say to me that's going straight on your thighs edwina <laughs> yeah Next week, uh, I have a chat with Michael Stocks. Uh, we talk about his foray into 24-hour racing and his book, One Track Mind. If you haven't read it, I, it's, not, um, it's not a huge read, but uh, it's brilliant. It's fantastic. It follows his journey through his first 24-hour race, but also in, throughout the book, you follow him on this 24-hour journey and it sort of dips in and out of how he got there and lessons he's learned along his life. And you really buy into it um you really follow this journey i actually had a little cry at the end Ooh. uh it's really great and so i know so i lovely chat with him and alongside that we will hopefully be talking to the winners of the centurion 100 mile track race which is happening on friday the 27th of april that is a an elite style race where uh men and women have to have a qualifying time and uh there's a strict cutoff so quite a lot of pressure for people and i imagine a lot of people going into that race are feeling you know they're not they're on they're they've not been races leading into it they've had to train through a pandemic so it'll yeah. be really interesting to see i wonder if some people that perhaps would have done really well falter or perhaps people that have you know kept it low key and managed to train really well are going to come through so i'm really looking forward to following well, we did see with all the fkts that went down last year that people performed really well without the distraction of lots of races so well, yeah we'll see be interesting what you got coming up gary over uh, to the Lake District. Yeah, over the lakes on Sunday. And that's the plan, the leg three, leg four, how it, yeah, we'll see how it goes with that. Um, we might end up doing a leg two out and back. I don't know, but it's going to be a big day either way. Um, but tonight we've got, it's um, an interval session again, 10 minutes of threshold pace with a 90 second recovery. Then it's five times 1K, game with 90 seconds and finishing off with another 10 minutes at uh, threshold pace. So quite a big session that actually all in all. Big session. I've done ones like that before. Yeah, if you will, my friend. And uh, that's it. Bit of easy running. Oh, well, I'm not too sure on Thursday whether to do the the midweek long run or do this kind of trailly uh, fart lick. I'm not too sure yet. We'll see see how I feel. But uh, Exactly. Yeah, see how you feel. If you do decide to do that midweek long run, you can always throw in a few strides going up the hill. Just to remind yeah. your body or strides on the flat throughout the run. Just to remind yeah. your body to tick those legs over uh, so you can sort of mix it up. You could, you really play it, especially now you're doing bigger weekends. I think one session and then play that second session, totally go into it and just yeah. as your body feels. That's what it's all going to be about, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. body feels. and mind actually. <laughs> body and mind, yeah. body and mind. What about yourself? 
uh oh i got coming up i'm gonna do a bit more biking build on my long run did a long run two hour long <laughs> felt like quite a long way on the sunday i tell you what the last the last 15 minutes i didn't forgot to take any fuel classic um <laughs> forgot to take any fuel so the last 10 minutes i was like thinking i could do with a gel now yeah. um yeah. but building on that um a little bit uh over the next week and just getting those running legs going. Now we still got snow, but the roads it doesn't settle because it's not the the ground's not cold. So yeah. um, building up the sessions, building up the biking to sort of replace the volume that the skiing did. <clears throat> so I'm going out live biking. Hopefully tomorrow, if I can sneak, send a few <laughs> WhatsApps to mates. Going, you want to have my kids? Ninety minutes, two hours, three hours, um, and uh, get back outside. Though it's still really, I mean, it's minus five today, so I'm not sure I'm ready to take that bicycle outside quite yet. Um, um, I'll see how I feel, but carrying on another week holidays. Oh, the joy. <laughs> <laughs> well, enjoy it. <laughs> Have a great weekend, Gary. Look forward to all the GoPro footage, probably 17 hours worth of it. I'm Eddie Sutton. And I'm Gary Thwaites. And let's run to the hills. 